Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you between one of the latest Leela ID networks, 61068, playing black against Stockfish 10. The time limit is a fast and furious 3 minutes with 2 second increment per move. The opening is the highly topical Frankenstein Dracula variation of the Vienna game, so knight c3, knight f6. White plays the provocative bishop c4 here, provoking this tactical move knight takes e4. So if white casually plays knight takes e4 here, d5 gives black a better game, at least equality or even a slight advantage in most variations after this. So white's critical test here is actually, after knight takes e4, to threaten checkmate with queen h5. This is one case where the direct move is actually the best move, it seems. Knight d6, hitting the bishop, protecting f7. It does leave e5 hanging, but usually players with white keep the tension. Uh, they don't play queen takes e5, which is a little bit drawish if, if the queens get exchanged especially. Bishop b3 just maintains that tension. We have knight c6, protecting the pawn now. Knight b5 which is trying to lure d6 knight away from f7, g6, queen f3, this is all theory, f5, queen d5, renewing the threat, knight takes d6 check, and queen f7, queen e7, and this is a really very interesting dynamic move. It offers a full exchange sacrifice with knight takes c7, which white usually takes. Now knight takes a8, and here is the end of the book given to both. And we saw on an earlier ID of Leela, albeit on a, on a faster time control than this, uh, that uh, there was an element of doubling on the H file later. So would it be the same sort of attacking pattern attempted uh, by black here? We see B6, knight E2, bishop B7, and white immediately took on B6. So stockfish 10 taking on b6 immediately without further ado and now playing queen d3 we see the move f4 and this is really really intriguing now white castles and there has been an over the board game in this position with the move knight b4 which didn't work out well for black even though it's uh, a tempo gaining move it seems black uh, hasn't really got the firepower that it might seem after d4 it sort of hits uh, black's pawn chain hard here and again a tempo game like this queen c3 and it's difficult actually to see what black's actually doing concretely after f3 bishop takes g5 this position there's always knight g3 and it's you know white's doing very well if we go back here if knight if the knight goes back to c6 Rook d1, and black's really under fire here, actually. Uh, so say f3, bishop takes, queen takes. Queen takes f3 is possible, even. In this position, black's actually in huge trouble, with the king still in the center. Uh, for example, knight takes d4 doesn't work. That bishop can just be taken. Knight takes e2 check, leaves black faced with queen takes d7 mate. If d6, for example, this, and then sliding the king back for bishop e6 uh, threatens queen d7 checkmate and it's very difficult to do something about it uh, so yeah this is just hopeless if that's the best move giving up the queen that's not good but the thing is if queen e7 that blocks an exit for the king making queen c8 checkmate so yes even this position looks as though black's just done over with the king in the center just taking that extinguishes uh, the black attack so white's got a big advantage there. Very, very interesting variations. But it shows how dangerous uh, this is for black as well, this whole thing, this whole concept. But here we have h5 uh, being played. And there's a very, very interesting kind of idea of getting a lock on white's king, a real padlock around white's king, metaphorically. The move f3 is played, which seems a good precautionary move against black playing f3 in various variations. We have knight f5, and it does echo some ideas that maybe, you know, h4 and knight g3 later would get a form pawn, would create a sort of lock and key over white's king's side. 
Factor in also, in this particular position, this diagonal seems more sensitive in theory. That could also contribute to a sort of padlock around white's king. We see c3, and then move queen f6, which echoes sometimes, well, as well as making way for the bishop to come to c5, uh, potentially. It echoes also the queen could bounce via h8 sometimes, or potentially double on that h-file via h6. We have king h1, which seems, in some respects, a clever defensive idea by white that it makes the g1 square vacant for the knight to go to g1 and then to h3 and then question black's attacking setup where would the breakthrough be we see h4 knight g1 so it seems a safe blockade for the moment as though this is quite cozy what could possibly go wrong here d4 is being covered b you know by that pawn that critical pawn here is covering d4 and b4 so why is this a problem? If we look at this position uh, with uh, bishop c4, it's already actually quite dangerous here uh, with knight g3 check. For example, knight takes, h takes, h3, bishop c5. White appears to be in big trouble. For example, b4, knight takes, bishop d4, keeping this lock and key over white's king. And here, um, after bishop b5, uh, g5 is dangerous uh, this this is really uh, it looks as though white's king is actually in big trouble bishop b5 imposes a slight inconvenience on black looking at d7 so that if bishop takes then that's queen takes d7 checkmate but it's black's turn and black has amazing resources here uh, to play with uh, so for example e4 is crushing after takes there's a spectacular move in this position. Can you guess it? Black to play in this variation. Really wonderful stuff. If I give you five seconds. Okay. Queen f5. So threatening rook takes h3. And if pawn takes the queen, rook takes h3 is checkmate there. Look at those beautiful bishops. So yeah, that's absolutely crushing e4 in fact. Oh, there's nothing to do here after queen f5 if queen takes d4 then rook takes h3 check and if king g1 rook h1 check it's all with check check and checkmate that form pawn checkmating there and the position is so good uh, as well as e4 in this position as long as bishop takes a1 isn't played um, there's also queen e6 looking at h3 like this after queen e2 as a token move yeah just crashing through like this is is mating so it's a really really strong position for black here this is only stopping one or two possibilities but e4 and queen e6 both absolutely crushing there uh, if instead bishop b2 uh, this just just taking the bishop coming back and then again g4 is very very dangerous uh, so Let's have a look. Knight g3, knight takes, h takes, h3, bishop c5. If rook e1 here is an alternative, let's have a look at this one. Knight e7, for example, rook e2, g5. And yeah, these bishops are really, really dangerous. Both of them here, after bishop b3, g4 is absolutely crushing. f takes, pins that pawn, and that means rook takes h3 is checkmate. So very, very interesting stuff here if if we look at the alternative bishop c4 to see the dangers uh, against white. So knight g1, and we have g5. Uh, again, here already, it seems as though knight g3 is actually really dangerous. For example, hg, hg, knight h3, uh, bishop c5, bishop d5, knight e7, just offering the, the bishop on b7. This position after queen e6, seems absolutely crushing what can white do against rook takes h3 so this is this is also really devastating it does seem as though white's in big trouble here so either as played g5 or knight g3 even seems to be very good for black but g5 was chosen knight h3 and here guess what black does okay it's it's just padlocking white's king knight g3 locking key against white's king hg hg the king is not really going anywhere to really a fixed target we have bishop d5 
there's no point playing king g1 bishop c5 would just kick the king back so what does actually white do bishop d5 uh we have here now the move which you might really find uh intriguing in some respects just bishop c8 just protecting d7 letting white you know potentially play bishop takes and as long as d7 is protected then there's the move queen e6 uh, so white tries b4 just to put that on the board uh, if bishop takes c6 just queen e6 threatening rook takes h3 is very simple and strong but first to make that even spicier bishop c5 to stop the king escaping and here you might think well there's no rook h3 but guess what black has in this position if i give you five seconds to pause video here okay black could play bishop a6 in this position getting the queen off the defensive uh, h3 square so for example like this once the queen comes off there then this crashes through with uh, a checkmate consequence so um after bishop c8 b4 we have knight e7 bishop b3 d6 and yes this absolutely looks as though white can't do anything these pieces over here are just hopeless it seems they're totally irrelevant to the onslaught here we have queen b5 now this does threaten that b6 pawn which could be a nuisance check black takes the time to play d5 protecting b6 so for example if bishop takes h3 queen takes b6 check king e8 taking here actually there's a breathing moment for black around here where for example here check and the bishop stops the king going to f7 so there's actually at least there's a perpetual check there so this is all extinguished by this move d5 protects b6 king g1 bishop takes h3 g takes rook takes h3 and black has such a crushing position we have bishop a4 so what does black play here you might think if i give you five seconds in this position we're really approaching the game end black to play okay we're threatened black is threatened with checkmate so check king g2 so not taking because that will be a uh, running with check if if white takes that's check there or, or there and then queen h2 is, is checkmate so uh after rook h1 we have king g2 rook h2 check king g1 and now guess what black plays here okay queen e6 and even yeah white actually felt it was totally lost it was adjudicated here um as a win for black if it continued uh let's say queen e8 check and d4 as as one try then here like check and check there is crushing for queen h2 but say white tries to give up a, a rook instead sorry give give up a bishop with queen d7 uh, queen takes bishop takes king takes so black here is technically <laughs> the exchange down but look at these pawns uh, we have a really crushing position after bishop uh, a3 knight f5 the knight would be heading to put pressure on f3 and white is really in a padlock here it seems uh, maybe we can call this a, a new sort of form of padlock attacking chess it just seems white's in such a, a bind and now there's the threat of g2 it's devastating that's winning material for example like this or, or giving up the bishop is, is hopeless so yes i'll take you to the uh the game end position king g1 it made uh, a profound effect on me this game how short and simple and sweet it was actually uh and speaking of short and simple and sweet there's a free dracula frankenstein dracula course to check out with trainable variations uh king's crusher tv slash dracula so that's also very short and sweet for trainable variations in this amazingly tactical opening one of the most interesting colorful openings that exists in chess opening theory so i think it's worth just knowing about it just for fun a lot of the variations 
and ideas and resources for both sides. This just seems um, very, very interesting how the intuitiveness of, of the attacking binds that was created in this game with Black, I thought was quite remarkable and concise. And making use of the default placements of the pieces very, very well. So I was really kind of astonished by this game. I hope you were a bit, a bit too. Okay, thanks very much.